So, by the grace of God, we are going to study chapter 13 today in the book of Jeremiah. That's part of our series going through the entire book. So, in this chapter, Jeremiah is teaching through two parables, very well-known parables. The Bible is like Koch. But it's a bit of a bad thing. Well, it's a bit of a bad thing. It's a bit of a bad thing. זה לא הצעה של איזה גלובה שהייתה פה פעם, זה פשטון. It's not the law of the human being, it is uh, the stuff that you use to collect iron pipes. כן, אבל בעבר היו עושים בזה בגדול הכל. And once upon a time, actually this was the raw material for the cloth of the high priest. אז זה חזק. And it's, it's really strong stuff. שזה טרי. אין סיכוי, ואם אתה רק תמשוך, לא תקרא אותו. When it's fresh, it's so strong, even a really strong guy can't tell it. מי שרוצה את זה, אחר כך יכול לבוא לך. If anybody wants to look at it, it's here, right around. זה גם טוב לפורים, בתור פעם. You can use it for פורים also, if you want to... If you want to hear it, you do. אז אוקיי, אנחנו עוברים את ירמיה פרק 13, ובואו עם ג'רמיה צ'אפטר 13 today. והכותרת של הדרשה, הכותרת של הלימוד זה שכר הגאווה גמות. And the heading that I want to put over today's lesson or today's passage is the wages of pride is exile. שכר הגאווה גמות. The wages of pride is exile. והעניין המרכזי של השיעור זה שאלוהים רוצה ללמד שהוא אלוהים העורק הראשי, עורק החיים של עם ישראל, של בני אדם. And God is teaching the people here that their life flows from Him. He is like the main artery in their life. Only God. התרחקת ממנו, התרחקת מחיים. If you draw away from God, you have drawn away from the source of life. התקרבת אליו, יש חיים. When you come close to God, you will experience Him as the source of your life. אז אני אקרא עכשיו את 11 הפסוקים הראשונים, פסוקים 1 עד 11, משל חגורת הפשטן. So I read the first 11 verses here in verse, in chapter 13, and it is the The parable of the ruined waistband, which was made out of this material, actually. Once you used to take this kind of stuff, weave it, and actually weave it into some kind of cloth, and you could tie it around your waist. And it was like a cut of your life. All the things were done in your life. It was like a cut of your life. It was like a cut of your life. אבל הכל היו קשורים, רבותיי, זה כמו חגורה. ומה היה חשוב שלו היום הדבר הזה? 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 ומה היה וסמתו על נותניך, ובמים לא תביאה הוא, ולקנה את האזור, כי דבר אדוני, ועצום על נותני, ולדבר אדוני אלי שלי כאמור. קח את האזור אשר קנית, אשר על נותניך, וקומי פרטה, ותמנהו שם בנקי כסלה. ואלך ואתננה ובפרט, כאשר ציווה אדוני אותי. ואם הקץ שונים רבים, תאמר אדוני אלי. כל מיני פרטה, וכך נשאר את האזור אשר ציוותיך לתמנה שם. ואלך פרטה ואכפור, ואקח את האזור מן המקום אשר תמנתיב שמה. ואם 
ולא נשחק האזור, לא יצלח לכל. ואת בא ה' אליי לאמור, כל מי ה' ככה השחית את גאון יהודה, ואת גאון ירושלים הרע. העם הזה הרע, המאמין לשמוע את דברי. תהלכים בשרירות לבם, והלכו אחרי אלוהים אחרים, לעבדם ולהשתחוות להם. ואני כאזור הזה, אשר לא אצלח לכל. כי כאשר ידבק האזור על מפני איש, כאן נדבקתי אליי את כל בית ישראל ואת כל בית יהודה לאום אדוני, להיות ממעם ולשון ולתהילה ולתפארת, ולא שמר. כי אומר הפרטים, Thus the Lord said to me, Go and buy yourself a linen waistband and put it around your waist, but do not put it in water. So I bought the waistband in accordance with the word of God, and put it around my waist. And the word of God, the word of the Lord came to me a second time, saying, Take the waistband that you have bought, which is around your waist, and arise, go to the Euphrates, and hide it there in the crevice of the rock. So I went and hid it by the Euphrates, as the Lord had commanded me. After many days, the Lord said to me, Arise, go to the Euphrates, and take from there the waistband which I commanded you to hide there. When I went to the Euphrates and dug, and I took the waistband from the place where I had hidden it, and lo, the waistband was ruined. It was totally worthless. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord, Just so will I destroy the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. This wicked people who, are, who refuse to listen to my word, who walk in the stubbornness of their hearts, and have gone, af- gone after other gods to serve them, and to bow down to them. Let them be just like this waistband, which is totally worthless. For as the waistband clings to the waist of a man, so I made the whole household of Israel and the whole household of Judah to cling to me, declares the Lord, that there might be for me a people for renown, for praise, and for glory. But they did not listen. כולם יודעים שתמונה שווה הולך מהם. לא משנה כמה שטויות אני אדבר, היום כולם יזכרו את הסוד על הפסטל. So, everyone knows that a picture is worth a thousand words. So, if you don't remember anything, you'll remember this stuff that I held up in the air. ואנחנו רואים שבאמת יש עלייה חוזר ומשתמש בסמלים ומשלים לאורך הפרק, פרק 18, פרק 24 ועוד. And Jeremiah is really good at using these object lessons. He has them throughout his book in many chapters. Actually, in Ezekiel also used object lessons in chapter 4 and onward. Okay, what are the details here? Jeremiah bought a boat made out of this, uh, what is it called here? Linen. Tixota. Tied. Tied around your waist. Alta Tixota. But be careful, don't get the stuff wet. Alta Tixota. And leave it on all the time. Tixota. 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 And leave this on so until everybody knows you. That's the guy with the linen waistband. And they start to ask, why are you wearing this? So, some time goes by, and everybody notices that Jeremiah has a different dress code than the rest of the people. So, the people say, listen, we remember you a few weeks back, and you, you, you didn't wear this waistband. So, what's the message? What do you want to tell us by wearing this thing? Talk of us, now God will end by the name of the Lord. And then God talks to Jeremiah again and tells him, now take that waistband off. That's right. So we'll make a record about the same set of lucky grip and lucky grip. And now we'll have a bit of a problem with the translation between the Hebrew Bible and what we are reading, all these different languages. Yeah. 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 תקבור את זה בהבנה, תשאיר את זה שם. 
they go to a place that's called Prat in Hebrew, bury it in the ground, and leave it there. She called him Greek. Go to the Euphrates. Oh, really? In English, it's go to the Euphrates. The poor guy had to walk like 700 kilometers to go, to go there. So a little bit of geography for Jerusalemites, that's good to learn. Jeremiah and Nino, they're actually neighbors. They live in the same neighborhood of Jerusalem. And Nino goes out on his balcony, he can wave Jeremiah and say, Hey, Jeremiah, how are you doing? And when our kids want to go to a nice desert oasis where there is some water in, in the heat of summer, they go to a place called Nechal Prat, or the, the Arabs call it Wadi Kelt. And it's just two kilometers below the house of Jeremiah. I will say, I call Mr. Hibli had a bite. It's all about the Gamakul. It's all close to home. You don't have to go all the way to Iraq to bury this boat in the ground. I said, I'm in the other bucket. So please, Prat the Babel or Prat the Babel, the name is Salat Atokhel. Actually, the translation doesn't make so much of a difference because the place where the boat was buried. That's not the central part of the message. The Shabbat It's actually a very small, unimportant detail. If you, if your understanding is that is in America, bury it next to the Mississippi. That's okay. Because the message is on a different emphasis. You bury it in any desert place where the ground is hot all the time, where there's a lot of impact of the sun, after a few months that you uncover it and take it out of the earth, it's very bitter. You tear, you pull it, and it just disintegrates into a dust. Now, do it with a piece of iron and bury it in the ground. Come after one year and pull it out, and you can actually bend it with your bare hands because a corrosion has started to eat away at it. And then in verses 8 to 11, God actually explains what this parable is all about, what it means. He said, this is the people of Israel. Israel. The people of Israel and Judah. When you are tied around God, when you are close to God, this is how I wanted you to be close to me. You were close to me like this. And all my power was available to you. And all my glory was available to you. People were looking at you, they saw me. People were looking for me, they found me through you. When you were like this close to me, God says, life was flying out from me 
into you. I was the source of your life. Call a koshili alabuchem. You were in. You were able to live in my power, in my strength. It was available to you. Hagishim babatman. The the rain came in time. Olat asana. Ha'elu latzmachim ba'alachem chita v'lechem v'ochel. All the seasons of the year were exactly the way they needed to be, and you had an abundance of fruit and things growing in your land, and grain, and you were wealthy. Ha'avim b'achu mikem v'lo'achem mehem. Your enemies were fleeing from you, and not you from your enemies. Then, and what happened when you drew away from me? Mother to mother. Now, what does it mean? What does that speak about in the life of the peace of people of Israel when God says, You have drawn away from me, you have pulled away from me? This is when the people stopped to obey God's word. And when God's prophets came to the people, the people told the prophets to be either be quiet or get killed. The people decided to follow idols and believe that those idols would give them the same as God could give or many better things than God could give. Remember that at this point where Jeremiah was prophesying, it was after a time of 75 years of absolutely godless rule in Judah. People had, had, had these terrible kings that were really godless rulers. And they falsely believed that they are lords of their lives. We are in charge of our, our own life. And it's the clear of day and the moon that I wish she was going to work out. You know, it's not going to work out. I'm 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 going to and I say, oh, look, these people that worship Baal and all kinds of things, they're blessed. They're wealthy. They're well off. So let's copy what they're doing so we'll be blessed too. And so, they were listening to human wisdom and human advice, and they never looked if that's what God's word is saying as well. But when somebody really knows the true God, one of the sayings of knowing God is that we we know we're totally depending on Him. Without Him, we're nothing. The shukr achi gadol sheyacholiot the yachsub she adam hu adam legoralo. And the greatest glory anyone can believe is that you are the master of your own life. That's a terrible lie. Hamarim shalom, ha'elilim shalom, yendut and shikr al-atzman. So, the teachers of Israel were teaching them a lie about themselves. Yemarze el nipchu et ha'ego shel ha'adam, yendut ha'adam shikr al-atzman. They were like blowing up or inflating the human ego and the human pride. We can do it. And the leadership of people were steeped in pride, in the sin of pride. The Gaza, he, a chit harison shalabria. No, a chit shalabar the Chava, the chit harison shalabria. A Gaza, a chit harison shalabria. Let's always remember that the very first sin 
in the world, the very first sin in the world was the sin of pride. The sin of Adam and Eve came afterwards as a result of that. But the first sin committed in the creation was the sin of pride. Satan, who was created as the greatest angel, as the angel of light, he was the one who invented pride. He was the one who sinned by the sin of pride. And pride is a very serious sin in the eyes of God. It leads to death. <coughs> King Solomon taught that pride comes before the fall. It's in, uh, in Proverbs 16, verse 18. And in the Bible, there's lots of verses that teach that same principle. As Kashar and Israel, so when the people of Israel drew away from God or pulled away from God, what happened to them? We can use a term that was coined by Paul in the letter to the Galatians. He said, you were cut off from grace. What does that mean when you get cut off from grace? Well, God's power is no longer available to you. Your enemies are coming to conquer your land and God takes off his hands. Things that God have, has promised you will be put off for later. Of course, God's promises always get fulfilled eventually, but your sin postpones the fulfillment of those promises. Here is this incredible basket full of blessings that I intended to give you. But right now, I can't give it to you. It has to be on the shelf. So Jeremiah tells to his people that drawing away from God and following idols, it's not just a cosmetic change. It's a difference between life and death. It's a difference between and that when you go to the idols and Hang yourself onto the idols. There's no source of life there, right? You're trying to get lost of something that is lifeless itself. There's just death there. Now, go out into the desert. Wherever there is a spring in the desert, oasis, or you will find, or uh, oasis, you will find Bedouin camping there. Yeah. Where would that be? Well, I mean, who would be so stupid to camp in a place where there's no water? You need a source of life, right? Yes, right? If there is a source of life, you stick with it. You don't go away. Now, you remember that about Moses it was said that he was the meekest of people. The humblest of people. What does that mean, to be meek or to be humble? Moses understood that anything he could do Anything he could accomplish, he could only do that with the help of God. He himself was nothing. 
אדם כושל, ועד כמה האדם זקוק לכפרה מאלוהים. משה ידע שלא השור או השפה מעניקים לו חיים. מוזס אמרסטוד, ברן איזה סינר, אבל מן נידס דה פרגיבנס אוף בר. הוא אמרסטוד, that bringing a sheep or bringing a bull as a sacrifice, that wasn't really what took the sin away. Moshe Ra'at Elohim. God, Moshe Ra'at Moses saw God face to face. And after that experience, he knew even better how much he was in need of God. And Moses saw what this true God can give to his children, and he could compare it to what idols could give to their children, because he had seen both worlds. So, I wish we would all be a little bit more like Moses. Now, what do we as believers in Jesus have to learn from this parable of the birth of Jeremiah? Well, how many times have I already said from up here that in the New Testament, There isn't actually anything new. In the New Testament, there isn't really anything new. God didn't invent some new patents and put those down into a new book. Throughout all the prophetic books, throughout all the books in the Old Testament, these prophets were pointing forward to the Messiah. They gave examples, they gave uh, parables, they gave word pictures to point forward and tell the people, when the Messiah comes, use this information to recognize him. Just remember that for the first 200 years that the Church of Jesus Christ was in existence, the scriptures that they read from and the scriptures that they were being fed with was the Old Testament scriptures. There was no New Testament codex yet that they could open up and read. Now, if we go to the New Testament and open it up, let's see what it teaches that is just exactly like what Jeremiah teaches. Well, Jesus, for example, says in John 15, verses 4-6, שכן בלעדיי אינכם יכולים לעצור דבר. מי שאינו עומד בי מושלך החוצה כשריג ומתייבש. אוקיי, אבייד אין מי, says the Lord Jesus, John 15 from verse 4. אבייד אין מי and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. Yeshua Messiah Hanad Yohanan Arbaat Rapafuk Shef 
אני הדרך והאמת והחיים, אין איש בא אל האב אלא דרכי. אותו דבר. Jesus also said in John 14 verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life, no one comes to the Father but through me. It's the same principle. ואגיד את אלה אנו פרק 11, אותו משל על עץ הזית, מה אנחנו רוצים להיגדר ולזרק? In Romans 11, there is the parable of the olive tree. Now, who wants to be a branch that gets cut off and thrown away? בספר ההתגלות פרק 2, המכתב מקהילת אפסוס. And then you get to the book of Revelations, chapter 2, and there is the letter to the church in Ephesus. חבובי, הוא שכחת את האהבה הראשונה, אני גם אסיר את הקהילה. And the church of Ephesus gets told, look, if you don't get back to the first love, to your first love that you have left, your whole church will cease to exist. מי בראשית, עד סוף החזון החלל, המסר הוא אחיד. באלוהים יש חיים, רחוק מאלוהים יש מוות, נקודה. אין דיפלומטיה, אין פוליטיקה להיקרות, אין שטויות כאלו. יש רק דרך אחת לאלוהים, ומי שיוצא מהדרך הדקה הזו, הולך לגיהנום. נקודה. So, throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, there is one very central theme in one very central teaching. You remain close to God, you are the source of life. You go away from God, you pull away from God, you lose the source of life. You, you end up with death. It's very simple. Now, some may ask, are you, now, do you mean that a believer can lose his salvation? No, I mean, definitely, they not know my mention by me. They not know us, and they not know my mention by me. I mean, I'm not going to say that. Now, I actually do not believe that somebody who is truly saved, truly born again, can ever lose that salvation. But if one of them can be broken from the earth and feel what it means to be a Christian, but it can happen to a believer that he pulls away from God, that he, knew, that he leaves the narrow way following the Lord Jesus Christ, and then he experiences what it means to be a This kind of stuff, how is it called? Dry linen. Well, yeah. Linen is the product, but yeah. this stuff has a name. I don't just uh, forgot it. Okay. 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 Okay, wrapped around the Lord Jesus. Yes, my machine, my community are built. Now, we have people here from many different cultures. And if I go on, yes, my machine, my community are built. People from many different languages and countries. And what you like, you have to tell me, 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 take one verse that was good for the Turks, and one verse that was good for the Romanians, and one verse that was especially for the Americans. No, this is one unified message that is good for everybody. And you know that the king, it can do to our day, the king of the earth, the prince, the hell of the world, the Lord 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 of the world. And I say this because Being close to God must express itself in the same kind of fruit in every person without any difference of culture or where you come from or what, what country you came from. The fruit that must show in your life, if you are a believer, must be the same for every person. Let me give you an example. חכו ליולי, חודש יולי-אוגוסט, wait for July. אנשים מקומיים שבאים רגיל לקהילה, באים עם חולצה נורמלית, בסדר, קיץ, אבל מודוס, עליו, 
פתאום באים קבוצה פערים מאיזה מדינה אירופית, אה, אין שמש, כולם באים תחתונים. חכו, זה בית אלוהים. זה בית אלוהים, אתה לא יכול לבוא ולומר, אם כל האנשים במדינה שלי הולכים בנימי, גם לא מותר ממני. מה זה, איזה סטנדרט זה? ככה אתה תלך לכותל המערבי? So, come July, come the hottest month of the year, the local people are out, they will come with short sleeves, and they will still be dressed. But then there will be some people coming from some cold country in Northern Europe, and they just come in their underwear. And you say, but listen, this is the house of God. And I say, but look, in our country, everybody walks around like this. When it's hot, when there is sun. I mean, for the house of God, there has to be a certain standard that applies to everybody. You can't say it's my culture. If it's offensive, it doesn't go in the house of God. It doesn't matter where you come from. That's what I'm going to do for the Jews and I'm going to give you right after the Chathuna. Don't you have some sex before the Chathuna? So if you're going to sing in Europe, I'm not going to sing in China. Or we teach our children, before you get married, you don't touch. And you certainly don't have sex with each other. But then, our children go to some youth conference abroad. And there, the youth leaders... And we're all just hugging and kissing away. What is the first thing? I mean, what is this thing? What is this thing? Okay. Well, I'm giving you a credit to get a lot of fun. Come on. Our kids come back and tell you, but first, it's okay. Everybody says that that's the way you do it. So, where is the standard? Who sets the standard? I would say, when I come to the world, I would say, I'm going to show you the standard. I'm going to show you the kids. מקבלים את הצבע של הסביבה. If we don't get back to the word of God, and let the word of God be our standard for our languages, for our cultures, for our countries, then we'll be, as Christians, like the chameleon, slowly, slowly, getting the same color like the world around us. אם אדם מתלבש סביב האדון ישוע, הוא צריך לקבל את האור, את הריח, את הכוח ואת הברכה של האדון ישוע. If a person remains close to the Lord Jesus, like in the parable, tied to the Lord Jesus, he will have the same appearance like the Lord Jesus. He will have the same smile. He will have the same light. He will have. He will be more and more like Jesus himself. How can we, as believers today, live a life or live the life of such a birth that is around the Lord Jesus and doesn't come off? Well, it starts with, of course, believing that Jesus is our Savior and Jesus is our Lord and King. And that there is no other way of going or entering to God the Father than through Jesus himself. The limud, the kriyat, the dvar, the name, the kriyat, the tzav, the chayim, the yot, the tzatr, the tzadvi. And there's another source that will help us, and that's the Word of God. Reading and studying the Word of God, not just as some little exercise that you have to get through every day, It really is the source where you draw your life and your direction from. Now, also Satan and his demons know who is God and, of course, believe in the existence of God. As they know the same, now, why don't they get saved? It's because they do not obey God. They know that they don't obey. That's a big difference. So as a church, 
They don't want to be like the demons that believe but don't obey. They want to be like children of God that obey out of love. Kata, 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 You read, you understood. The next stage is you do. What did you have done? What did you say? 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 All right, you may have heard, you may have heard, and you didn't understand. So let's sit down and study the passage again, and maybe this time you get it. And once that puzzle picture starts to be almost complete, Well, you understand, you know what, what the way is? Start to walk in the way. You know what to do? Start to do. Now you get to a point in your life when you need to make a crucial decision. And when you make your decision, remember that that decision needs to line up with all the principles that you know from Scripture, and if that decision violates one of the principles you know from Scripture, then it's not the right decision. That's simple. As though you said the Yaha, 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 you may some, need some advice so we can sit together and look into the world of God together and Maybe come up with the right solution together. That's why we are a community. And not everybody by himself. Anava, the tomorrow in Gilita Chet, Chatata, of Uchata, Bukarta, Bikora Kavala, Tidvade, Tavakeski Hame Elohim the Adam, the Tarech Elohim the Kabal Kavod. Another ingredient is humility, is repentance, in humility. You understood that you did something wrong. Repent, ask for forgiveness from God and from people, and you will see that God forgives and you can continue in freedom to walk His way. You know that the perfect church is a church that has no people in it. It's clean, there's no sin, there's no balagam, no people. But there is no church like that. It wouldn't be a church. Before I was a pastor, I was working for Intel. And when a machine, one of the machines we were working with, started to make a noise, we knew it had only about two minutes to survive. No, we gave it only one second to survive. Oh, okay. באתי לכפתור, המתח הראשי, עשיתי לו בוף. לקחתי את המפורה המכונה, פילקתי לה את המנוע, החלפתי חלקים, והיא עשתה בדיוק מה שאמרתי לה. And when the moment I heard the noise, I ran to the main switch and stopped it. And then dove into that machine and took out the parts that I thought were making the noise. And in the end, that machine went back to doing exactly what I wanted it to do. <laughs> Now, once I started to work in the church, I found out that the church doesn't work that way. <laughs> It doesn't work that way with people. <laughs> it would be good if it was like just with Lego. There's one piece that's no good, you take it out, you put another one in, and you're back to work. <laughs> So when I started to work in the church, I learned how to pray. And I learned that if anything goes well, it's by the grace of God, it's never by my own ability and strength. I also learned that we are very much dependent on each other. We, we need each other. אנחנו צריכים איש את רעו כדי לגדול, כדי להגשים את התכלית של הישועה שלנו. We need each other to encourage our growth, to 
fulfill the purpose for which God has saved us. אז יש אנשים שיגידו, לא קוראים ללכת לקהילות, אנשים שהם לא פריקים. So, yeah, I meet people once in a while who said, I don't go to church anymore. I, it's, it's all bad people there. All the neighbors are bad people. And in Lutheran King, so they have been Lutheran yeah, King. King. It doesn't go in English. Yeah. That's in Lutheran people, but people have yeah, probably okay. problems. All right. Now, Dharma Apatsudok. Now, if you say that, you may actually be right. Abba Gamata Achadman. But you're one of those people, right? And we're still depending on each other. We need each other. And God told us in the book of Hebrews, do not forsake your assembling together. Actually, it says encourage one another to service. אם אתה מתרחק מקהילת אלוהים, אתה מחזיק דגל שאומר, או שאתה תינוק באמונה, או שאתה מעולם לא היית מאמין. תזכור מה שעכשיו אמרתי. אוקיי. אם אתה מתרחק מקהילת אלוהים, 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 Or you're not in the faith at all. You're not saved at all. It's not a game playing, being part or not being part of the Church of God. When we obey God, we give God glory. Obeying God or obedience to God is a form of worship. כאשר אני מכבד את אשתי ואוהב אותה, זה ישתוך ולא לאלוהים. If I honor my wife and I love her, that is actually a form of worship to God. כאשר אני בא לקהילה ועוזר ומייצם את מטרות הרוח שלי, זה ישתוך ולא לאלוהים. If I come to the church and I help and I do things and I use my gifts, my spiritual gifts within the church, that is part of my worship to God. כאשר אני בא בצורת צבועה וענווה, אני משתחווה לאלוהים. If I come in decent dress, that is part of my worship to God. אז רבותיי, רוצים חוזק, רוצים יופי, רוצים חסד, בבקשה להידבק, לא להתרחק. So, if you want strength, if you want blessings, If you want help from above, stay close to God. Stay wrapped around the Lord Jesus. Yes, I look for Ach, Marcus, okay? Don't worry, it's okay. Our brother Marcus is here this morning. And he underwent some really, really tough surgery recently. He needed a, a fresh piece of meat. attached to his arm. וכדי שהבשר הזה יחיה, היה צריך להעביר את הדם מהמקור לחלק שמודבק. And in order for this new piece of muscle to be accepted and to grow into the old muscle, blood needed to flow through it. אתם יודעים איך העבירו דם מפה לחלק החדש? So what did the doctors do in order for the blood to make the blood flow through this new piece? Of course, it had to be firmly attached to the place. It couldn't be, like, somewhere far away. And then comes uh, the technology of 2015, how to make the blood flow. They had uh, ten leeches attached to that new piece of muscle. I have a the picture. But I don't know if you want to see it. They were sucking the blood through the tissue. Like things that people already knew how to do 3,000 years ago. And the time, in the far left of the book, the halukot were able to get out of the way and not in the way of life. But if there was no physical contact, between 
the arm and the new piece of flesh, the leeches wouldn't have anywhere to suck the blood, right? Uh, they needed to be firmly attached. Uh, I brought these, but I couldn't bring the other ones to show, okay? No problem. That is just another example that shows us that life comes through being firmly attached. Life for us comes through being firmly attached to the Lord, to the Lord Jesus. But to think that it was that way as Masal Nivlei Hayayin, to let Masal Kedai Hayayin. Okay, stand it up. Jesus, uh, okay. Then in chapter 13 in Jeremiah, our chapter, verses 12 to 17, there's another parable. It is the parable of the wine containers. Of course, those parables have similarities. They are teaching the same thing. And the first one who are Tokfatah, Tokfatah Ga'adah. Here, he again speaks about the pride of the people, and he gives a parable that explains what happens when you're proud. When you're proud. As well, it has to constant it right. So let's, let's, let's read the verses 12 to 17 in chapter 13 of Jeremiah. Jeremiah parallel to the Ga'adah. Let's say it's full. Let's say it's full. Full. 
טוב, יפי טוב. אז אנשים אומרים, תגיד, מה אתה חושב שאנחנו לא יודעים מה זה? בוודאי שזה נכון על אלה מהם. מטולים, מה אתה אומר על אלה מהם? So people look at me giving this example and they say, yeah, of course, we know this is a can of water. These cans are actually designed to be filled with water. It's, it's normal. But you can't do it again. You can just make the water or think that the water is wine. The third one is the one that 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 is the one. So Jeremiah holds up a jar and he said, here is a jar and behold, it's full of wine. And the people say, well, of course it's full of wine. These things are always full of wine. That thing. So then Jeremiah said, oh, you understood it? Well, this is a picture of you. That thing. This is you. You're full of drunkenness. You're full of drunkenness. אם אתם חושבים שהם עכשיו רצו אל ירמיה ונשקו לו את הרגליים, אתם טועים. הם פשוט הוסיפו עוד מחסנית לרובה. So if you think that now these people fell at the feet of Jeremiah and thanked him for revealing this to them, you're wrong. They just put the magazine into their gun. הם היו מוכנים עוד יותר להרוג אותה במקום לחזור בתשובה. אגב, טמטמה אותם, שיקרה אותם לחלוטין. even the man ready to kill him than before because they were totally blinded by their pride. המילה שיכרון שבוחנים אותה בתנ״ך יש לה משמעות מאוד חשובה. Now this word that is translated here a drunkenness in the Old Testament it appears relatively often and it has a very clear meaning. המילה שיכרון באה תמיד עם זעם אלוהים. זאת אומרת, עכשיו בגלל זה אתם תרנשו, האויבים יבואו, ואף פעם לא משהו נחמד. This word, drunkenness, is very often associated with punishment from God. When God was pouring out his punishment on, of, on people, they were described as being like drunk. ולמה הכוונה? מלאים בשיכרון. מה הכוונה? מה עומד מתחת לזה? So, how would that be expressing itself being filled with drunkenness? הם היו כולם נתונים בצורה מלאה מכף רגל ועד ראש תחת השפעה מזיקה. They were totally under the influence of something bad, under the influence of something negative, something evil. רבותיי, אין ואקום רוחני, לא קיים. Because there is not no such a thing as a spiritual vacuum. אם אדם עוזב את אלוהים, הוא למעשה אומר לשטן, בוא תמלא אותי. If somebody draws away from God, he basically invites Satan into that empty space where God should have been. ברגע שהם עזבו את דבר אדוני, הם מילאו עצמם בכל חוכמת העולם. שלא מעניקה חיים, לא מעניקה ברכה. The moment that they rejected the teaching of the word of God, they invited all of human wisdom to fill their minds and to fill their understanding. וכל ההחלטות שלהם, כל הלך המחשבה שלהם, היה סביב המידע החדש שהם הכניסו, אבל לא על מידע מדבר אלוהים. And all their minds and all their thinking were revolving around this human wisdom, this information that they observed, and it just made them withdraw further and further from the truth of God. So Jeremiah understood how serious the situation was. To what extent people's pride had already drawn them away further and further from God. And he says, people wake up, the clock is ticking, the, the fuse is already very short, it's burning, it's going to hit the bomb any time. Also today, there are believers that are in this 
in this state of drunkenness. alcohol. And I'm not speaking about drunkenness caused by alcohol. אני עם הדעות התנכיות שלי נחשב לקיצוני. רוב, בוא נאמר, רוב הקהילות המשיחיות בעולם יגידו לי, אתה פסיכי, אתה פונדמנטליסטי, אתה מיושר, לך מפה. What we're teaching in our church is basically thought as fundamentalism, as realist fanatics. Most churches in the world would pray to us and say, you're not normal. You're taking things too serious. Get off from those standards. You're fundamentalists. Hey, if you say what's written in the Tanakh, there's modernization, there's things that are changing, you can get divorced, and that's the world, but they're not standing together. Now, what's wrong? People tell me, what, you mean you're doing what's written in the Bible? Listen, that book is 3,000, 2,000 years old. We are in modern times. Wake up. It's 21st century. Okay, so people get divorced. I mean, okay, they don't get along, so they get divorced. What do you want? Okay, and I'm a fundamentalist. But I prefer to be a fundamentalist, to have this as my foundation to stand on. And I said, I'm a mother. 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 Or when it gets to... to ethical issues uh, well, you know, young people want to try each other out before they get married, physically. I mean, they, they, they should know how, if it works or if it doesn't work for them. So that's the way the world thinks and that's the way some people in churches say that's the way it should be. Ken, you have to together later. Now, there is a difference between a The man and the woman. I can swear to you there is a difference. Now, the value, the value of a man and the value of a woman is equal in the eyes of God. But God gave each one a different job description. And that doesn't mean that this one is better and this one is less good or this one's more important, this one less important. Well, this is the way God designed things to be. And when we honor God's design and God's purposes, we will always see a blessing. Why am I speaking about these things? Because the Word of God, through the teaching of the Apostle Paul, tells us, be filled with the Spirit. All right? We should be like, well, drunken with the Spirit. No, okay. Now be careful about that. There is a teaching that I don't know. Well, what does it mean to be drunk in the Spirit? What does it mean to be drunk in the Spirit? To do what my flesh tells me to do and then say, oh, God told me to do it. Mm. <laughs> to be filled with the Spirit is as follows. You read the Word of God, you have been. You understand the Word of God. You pray to God for the strength to obey what you have understood. And to obey perfectly, fully, to what is written in the Word of God. Not my will, but your will be done, Lord. Zeh. That is being filled with the Spirit, because that's only possible if you're filled with the Spirit. Still, that's it. This is my understanding. But yes, we need to be spiritual, spiritually mature in order to 
our time is up, has been up for a while, so let me sum things up in a few sentences. Something new. <laughs> what well, I told you, this one means nothing. You didn't believe me. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. בקיצור, בפסוקים הבאים עד סוף הפרק, ירמיה מדבר אל המלך ולאימא שלו. So, in the verses that follow, that we haven't covered yet, Jeremiah turns to the king and the king's mother. והוא בא ואומר להם מילים קשות. And he has very hard words to say about them. אתם מבינים, כשמטוס הולך למבצע, יש לי נקודה שאחריה... קוראים לה נקודת אל חזור. אם כבר עברת אותה, לך קדימה. אתה לא תוכל לחזור, כי לא היה לך דלת. You know, in aviation, there is a certain point that has a certain name, which I don't know if it's... The point of no return. The point of no return, good. If a plane started out from here, and it is getting past this point, that's the point of no return. The only place you can go is forward. If you try to go back to your point of departure, you aren't going to get there because your fuel is going to end somewhere here. And then, that's it. Rav B'nai Yehuda. Rav B'nai Yehuda. Rav Anashim Shandu Lekei Irmiya Avruta Al Chazor. Actually, most of the people that were listening to Jeremiah when he gave these messages, they were beyond the point of no return. אמרנו, אתם, אתם ספציפית, האם לכושי יכול להיות לבן? בוודאי שלא. האם נמר יכול לאבד את חברות שלו? ובוודאי שלא. גם אתם כבר לא תוכלו לחזור בתשובה. And at some point he was telling them, he was telling to the people, can a black person turn himself into a white person? He cannot. Can a... Uh, Leopard, get rid of these spots that he has all over his body? No, he can't. It's the same with you. You are sinners to the point where you can't repent anymore, where you cannot change anymore. I mean, no one can tell you who is the first of the Nukudat Al-Khazor. Now, I cannot tell from here if anyone in this Beautiful group has passed the point of no return. Rak alayim yodea. That is something only God knows. Lanu nigzar, lamshikta basura ba'arada at mother. We have to continue to preach the gospel until we die. B'chol matzav. Under all conditions. Aval ayim mishu pra ya rotse niyot oto namer שכבר לא מסוגל לשנות אך בעבורות שלו? But is there anybody here who wants to be like that a leper that is unable to change his spot, his appearance? תזהר, הגאווה תשקר לך. Be careful. Pride may lie to you. Pride is always going to lie to you. הגאווה תגיד לך ש... אני לא מודע לי! אני מחצים חברים! אני רק סבל בגללו! הגאווה תשקר לך. Pride is going to tell you this Bible stuff. It's not modern. It's driving away my friends. I can't associate with any normal people. I all think I'm weird. That's what pride is going to tell you. והנביא הבהיר את ראשי העם, את המלך ואת הגבירה, בגללכם זה מה שקורה לצון אלוהים. And Jeremiah tells to the king and to the king's mother, it is because of you, because of your wicked leadership, that the people are in this state. יש עוד הרבה לומר, הזמן נגמר לי, צר לי. There will be a lot more to say, but time is up. מי שרצה את זה בעברית, כל השיעור מלא כבר באתר. Whoever can read the Hebrew version, the entire lesson until the end of chapter 13 is already on our Yeshua website. Let's remember and let's learn from this example. Be close to the Lord, be wrapped around the Lord. And, and unless you want to be disintegrated into dust. Be Yeshua 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 Yeshua
רחוק מחיים אין חיים. In Jesus there is life. Apart from Jesus, apart from the source of life, there can't be life. והפרקטיקה זה כמו שאמרנו, לקרוא, לציית ולהצמיד בדרך האמת. And the practical way of doing this is to read, to understand, to obey, and to do. That's the way it works in daily life. כי אז יראו יותר את אלוהים והפאר שלו מאשר אותנו. Because then people around us will see more of the Lord Jesus and more of His glory and less of our old men. אבא שבשמיים תודה לך. Father in heaven, thank you. לך הכבוד והתפארת. Be your name glorified. עזור לנו אבא להצמד אליך ולא להתרחק. Help us to be close to you, to be wrapped around you and never draw away. עזור לנו אבא להצמד אליך גם כאשר המחיר יהיה גבוה. And help us, Lord, to remain close to you also at times when the price will be high. Abba, b'vakasha, azor lano, shibarava, lo t'sanver otano. And Lord, protect us from pride that makes us blind. We thank you for all that you have already done in our lives. We thank you for so many things you have done. All that you have already done in our lives. We thank you for salvation. And in the end of the day, there is someone who is now, שעדיין לא בחר בך עם עליון, תתקח את הנוער שלא יאבד את האפשרות לעשות את זה. אמרת, אם לא יש אף אחד פה שלא עשה את הקריאה ואת ההחלטה ולא עשה את ההחלטה ולהחלטה ולהחלטה. מודים לך בשם ישוע אדוננו, אמן. And we thank you in the name of Jesus our Lord. אמן. לקבלת ספרון מידע ללא תשלום, 